to have art of that quality taken and never to be seen, never to be appreciated by anybody again is, is a kind of a, a devastating impact. Despite a $5 million reward from the museum, no one's been arrested and the art is still missing to the dismay of the former U.S. attorney in Boston, Donald Stern. So the investigation so far would be called a failure? Well, I guess, I guess, the, I guess you have to say that. For now, one of the few remaining hopes for the FBI centers on a one-time member of a notorious Boston art theft ring who says he knows who took the masterpieces and how to get them back. I believe I have a very accurate picture of uh, everything that's transpired. His name is Billy Youngworth, whose claims have previously been met by some with skepticism. But within days of the theft, he became and remains a focus of the FBI investigation, even though he has about the best alibi possible for his whereabouts that night. I was incarcerated in the Federal Correctional Institution in Memphis, Tennessee. So you did not do it? No, I didn't. But for the last seven years, Youngworth has been in a high-stakes battle of wits with the FBI trying to prove that he can get the art back without giving the FBI enough proof to put him in prison for possession of stolen property. You saw it before it was stolen? Sure, in the museum. Have you seen it since? Have I seen it since? Um, why, of course not. Art thieves in the movies, like Pierce Brosnan in the recent Thomas Crown Affair, seem such romantic figures. <laughs> but not to someone who says he knows how it's really done. You know, they always portray, like, you know, some guy hanging from, like, black pajamas and a cable in the middle of the night, you know, beating the laser systems, when in reality all it really is is, like, broad daylight, take it off the wall and run like hell. It was just after one in the morning, on St. Patrick's Day, 1990, that two men walked up to the side entrance of the tiny Gardner Museum of Art. They were dressed as police officers. Billy Youngworth says he knows what happened. Open up, it's the police. No one got hurt. There wasn't even a gun used. There was a full Nelson and a pair of handcuffs. With the two museum guards handcuffed in the basement, and surprisingly, no alarm wires on the paintings. The two thieves were free to roam a place that Youngworth says had long been targeted. The place was a joke. It was 1.24 in the morning when the two men dressed as police began what would become an 81-minute art thieves' dream. First, the Dutch room, where five of the 12 pieces were taken. Rembrandt's only known seascape, the storm on the Sea of Galilee, valued at well over $100 million. The thieves pulled it off the wall and cut the canvas out. Next, a few paintings over, Rembrandt's Lady and Gentleman in Black, also pulled down from the wall with the canvas cut from its frame. Then the thieves moved across the gallery room to one of only 32 known paintings by the Dutch master Vermeer, the concert, estimated value as much as $200 million. Then it was back down to the ground floor, where the thieves took their final piece, an Edouard Manet portrait of a French gentleman, Chez Tortoni. A short time later, the thieves and the art left the museum through the side door and have not been seen in public since. So what happened to the art? Well, what happened to it? I think it found another home. According to Youngworth, the stolen art ended up at the home of a Boston crime gang boss named Joe Murray, convicted of running guns to the Irish Republican Army. People involved in the case say Murray bought the hot art from the original thieves for just $300,000. So the art ended up with Joe Murray? At yeah, one time, Joe was in control of it. And what happened? Um, Joe died. Um, he was killed, and he didn't control anything after that. Everybody, everybody was looking for it. And, uh, and I don't mean the police. And um, somebody was just uh, extremely clever and quiet and uh, was sitting on it for a number of years until things cooled off and then uh, would try to market it. But um, that's somebody you? Uh, no, of course not. 
wasn't me. The FBI and federal prosecutors have signaled what some see as a dramatic change in tactics towards Youngworth, a decision made by the new U.S. attorney in Boston, Michael Sullivan. What is more important, you know, a successful prosecution or a successful return of the artwork? And if they're mutually exclusive, I think a su successful return of the artwork is a higher priority. As it stands now at the Gardner Museum, there are only empty frames where the stolen Rembrandts and the other masterpieces were once on display. Under the terms of the will of the museum's founder, Isabella Stewart Gardner, nothing can be moved, nothing put in their place. And Youngworth says it won't be as easy now to make a deal to fill those empty spaces as it once might have been. You know, they were uh, local and available, from what I understood. And, um, you know, now, uh, you know, you're going to need a translator and a passport to get them. When we come back, the market for stolen art and the business of getting it back. Yard, who was involved in solving the theft of another version of the screen back in 1994, and Sharon Flesher, Executive Director of the International Foundation for Art Research, a nonprofit group that studies authenticity, ownership, and theft in the art world. And let us begin with you, Sharon. Why is the loss of the scream such a big deal in the art world? Well, frankly, the loss of any uh, major painting would be a big deal in the art world. The scream is a particularly iconic image because the young man in the scream seems to be letting out a scream of horror and anxiety and, and terror that everyone seems to uh, uh, read uh, uh, into it as the anxiety of modern contemporary life. Um, and so the image uh, carries extra meaning beyond the normal painting uh, uh, by Munch. Charles Hill, uh, as we heard, you investigated a similar theft back in 1994. In this case, do you think it's the work of professional thieves who knew what they were doing? Well, they're, they're not professional thieves insofar as they, they go for big crime and, and big money. They're street criminals going for trophy crime. It's just that what they do when they do it, um, these sorts of thefts, robberies, as this one was, uh, are so dramatic and so outrageous that that's why people are quite rightly... Um, not just surprised, but tremendously dismayed by them. Why are you suggesting that this particular theft uh, is not the work of a prose who might have known what they were doing and the value that these works uh, have had? Well, from the reports I've read, these were clowns that came in, didn't quite know what they were doing. They eventually yanked things off the wall. They went to their car, they dropped them, they you know, tore them out of their uh, frames. They did it all in broad daylight on CCTV ca cameras. They dropped the car off. Oh, no, these, these are just street, street criminals. They're, they're nothing special, and they're certainly not stealing it to order for some Captain Nemo or Dr. No or any character like that. That sort of thing just doesn't happen. These are simply um, wise-ass punks who are doing this because they want to um, outrage everyone, and they want to have a, they want to have a laugh because they know how easy it is to do it, and that's what's so outrageous. Sharon, can these thieves, whoever they might be, possibly uh, sell these works anywhere on the market? They can't sell them on the legitimate market. There isn't a collector, a dealer, a museum in the world, um, a legitimate one, uh, that would acquire the, uh, uh, either of these two works. They're just too well known, and the theft itself is, is so well publicized. Uh, it's headline news. No, there's absolutely no legitimate market for these works. So why would you steal something that you can't sell? Well, um, I could answer flippantly and say, beats me, but um, in fact, there are many reasons why people commit these kind of crimes. Sometimes it's for the sheer publicity value. Sometimes it's for ransom, political or otherwise. Um, sometimes it's for some other uh, statement that they want to make and that might come out subsequently that we don't yet know. But it's, it's certainly not for a legitimate market. Charles, is it likely that the museum or perhaps an insurance company would pay some kind of a, a ransom, ransom similar to a kidnapping here? Well, I'd certainly hope not. I mean, a ransom would be utterly counterproductive. Um, mm -hmm. Paying ransoms to these sorts of criminals is, a, is, is utterly the wrong thing to do. However, paying a reasonable reward to somebody for information to lead to the recovery of these two pictures and uh, all being well the, the um, apprehension of these criminals, well, that would be great, but, um, and it would be the right thing to do as well. But 